Amagon is a small town in Jackson County, Arkansas that has a population of 69 people, according to the 2020 census. It was also an NES game released by American Sammy in 1988. In it, you play as Amagon, the most underdressed and overdue for a haircut marine in the history of the world, whose plane has crashed and deserted him on an island. Your mission is to get to the other side of the island because that's where your rescue boat is inexplicably docked. The marines in this game are not very good navigators. Along the way, you'll encounter a barrage of wildlife that all want you to die. I guess they feel like humans are an invasive species. You're armed with a rifle, which has limited ammo, and when you run out, you're resorted to using your gun as a club, which isn't very effective at all, and downright impossible against bosses, but at least it's something. That being said, you're probably not going to have to worry about this unless you're an absolute trigger-happy madman, because you do have plenty of ammo, and the game is fairly generous with bullet refills. A lot of enemies are low to the ground, but you can drop on your belly and shoot from there to get to these small bastards. The controls are responsive, but the jumping is spotty as shit because you get a lot of height, but you're in the air for like a millisecond. It makes it difficult to position yourself, especially when avoiding enemies, which is a real problem because guess what? You can only take one hit and you're dead. Now that's pretty common and it is the practice in many great games including Super Mario Bros. for example, but there are several reasons why that system absolutely blows in Amagon. The biggest reason is how easy it is to get hit. The enemies usually aren't all that complex, but they're often fast, come out of nowhere, or there are several on the screen at the same time and you have to be precise with your positioning, which isn't easy when you consider the previously mentioned overly quick jumping mechanics. By default, the one hit death system makes this game very frustrating. However, there is help in the form of a power-up. When you collect this icon, called the Mega Key, you'll obtain the ability to play as Megagon, a steroid-riddled machine of a beefcake able to wipe the floor of enemies that normally require several bullets with only one punch. Or even better is the Laser Blast, a wave of energy you can toss that not only covers a lot of ground, but obliterates everything in its path. Not to mention you get hit points with it. That's right, it's not a one-hit death anymore. So wait a minute now. This guy is a marine, but he's also basically the Incredible Hulk. And then at the end, you end up fighting aliens, including the final boss being a huge alien that's hiding out in your rescue ship. What's going on here? Well, the plot in the original Japanese release was a little different. In that version, you play as a scientist who has a special drug that can transform him, and the creatures on the island have stolen his formula. So while that's also way the hell out in left field, it's at least a better fit for the context of all this insanity. I guess the war on drugs that we were engaged in at the time prompted us on this side of the pond not to glorify drug use. Anyway, the Megagon feature is a big help, but the caveat is that you have a limited usage of its power. You'll be given what's called Mega Points, which are converted from your regular point total. You get one Mega Point for every 5,000 points on your score. Whenever you take a hit, or use your laser beam, you're deducted one mega point, and you have a maximum of 14 mega points at a time. So as dominant as you can be as Megagon, you probably want to conserve it. Once you collect the mega key, you can trigger Megagon by pressing select, so you can even save your power up for later when you want to use it, for example, the boss battle. When you take a hit with zero mega points, you'll be transformed back to Amagon. The mega keys are semi-random, there are certain enemies that will have them sometimes, but it's never really cut and dry where they'll turn up, although there are several spots where you're almost certain to find them. Either way, I personally like to save Megagon for the boss battles, even if there are usually mega keys shortly before the boss, or even during the boss battle in some cases, you'll still want as many mega points as possible during the fight. That being said, I'll treat the walkthrough as though you're always in Amagon mode, with the exception of certain spots. Aside from the mega keys, other power-ups you can find are bullets, points, and one-ups. There are continues too, but it's one of the weirdest continue systems I've seen. First off, when you elect to continue, you can pick any of the previously beaten zones. So you can go back as far as the second zone if you wanted, not sure why you would, 
but you can't continue from the zone that you're actually on. So you're basically going back at least one zone as if you're playing Punch-Out and you lose and end up getting ranked down. If that weren't enough, you can't even use this continue feature until Zone 4. So if you're on Zone 3 and you get a game over, you have to start all over again. There are 6 zones altogether with 2 stages each, totaling 12 stages altogether. Each zone has a different theme, so you'll either be at the river, the mountains, or the rainforest, for example. So while this is all on a deserted island, there is a variety of visuals, especially when you factor in that each zone has its own set of enemies. You won't see any repeats until the very last zone. So while the graphics aren't bad, the finicky jumping controls and the sloppy gameplay in general make this one tough to stick with. You play this game and generally end up asking yourself why you're not playing a better running gun game like Contra, Bucky O'Hare, or anything from the Mega Man series. The one distinct characteristic that this game has is the whole Mega Gun metamorphosis, but that's not nearly enough to save it. So the first zone takes place in the plains. In the first stage, you'll encounter these tarantulas that drop down from the tree. Stop short to lure it down, and then blast them. But keep in mind that later on you'll run into some that actually wait for you to pass first. So always approach cautiously just in case. Then you'll get these mushrooms that bounce around. Some bounce higher than others, so watch the pattern and jump over or run under them when you get an opening. Or you can just shoot them. It takes three hits each, so make your decision on a case-by-case -case basis. Then you'll notice these birds that have been floating harmlessly above you early on are starting to fly at your level now. Drop down and let the ones at head level fly over you or shoot them. Then there are these snakes that wander back and forth and fire off three balls into the air. Keep your distance to avoid the balls and drop low to get an attack on them. Then there's the wasps. They'll spit out three projectiles and a spread shot and then hover around for a bit before taking off. If you're close, you can let the projectiles pass over you, otherwise give yourself as much distance and slip between them. When you get here, this bird will swoop down. Shoot it, or get on your belly and let it pass. Down the home stretch, you've got snakes coming from the left and birds from the right, so be ready to shift back and forth between the two and fire often. The boss of the stage is the Lion Man, who just walks up to you throwing uppercuts. Hopefully you have a Mega Key, because you pretty much need to be Mega Gone for this. He'll head straight for you, he won't back up, and you can't jump over him, so you're pretty much screwed as Amagon. You won't have enough time to shoot him. As Mega Gone, use your laser beams to wipe him out in no time. Early on in the second stage, you'll get a wasp from overhead. Hide down here to avoid its attacks, and then stay back to avoid the attacks from the next one. You'll get a couple pairs of these damn things in a row. Keep yourself low to avoid this shit. Then you'll get to this mushroom that hops onto this coral, and then back again once you get close. Get under him and jump when it's on its way back. Then let this dipshit jump back into the water when you get close. Then there's a buttload of birds at high speed, so be ready to fire. When you get to these mushrooms that bounce between the rocks, get behind them and blast them. You don't want to take your chances jumping between them. There's not much in the way of room. At the home stretch, you get a bunch of shit at once, mostly birds and wasps, but you'll get the occasional snake and mushroom. Creep up a little bit and be ready to hit the deck to avoid the wasp attacks and swooping birds, blasting anything at ground level. You'll get a rematch with Lion Man. Bust out your Megagon at this point and wipe him out. Then you'll get to the main boss of the zone, Lion Head who comes just as advertised. He'll spit fireballs and slowly bounce towards you. Jump over them and smack him with your laser beam. It won't take long for him to turn to his second form, where he grows another face out of the back of his head. Now it'll float around the room slowly, spitting fireballs from either side. Unleash your laser beams at him in between his fireball shots, or you can take him out with your regular gun if you're Amagon. It'll just take a lot longer. After enough hits, you'll take him out, and you're done with the zone. The second zone takes place in the jungle, and the blurb on the first stage tells you to ride the turtles. First thing you'll see is an elephant man. He wanders towards you, eventually firing a projectile, but he does take a lot of hits to kill him. 
drop down and pump his guts full of lead. Then you've got these mosquitoes that hover at about center screen and then back off. Just keep your distance. God, why aren't mosquitoes this easy to avoid in real life? Then these porcupines will drop from the trees when you get close and then run back and forth. They're very similar to the tarantulas in zone one, especially since they'll sometimes drop after you pass them. The thing you've got to watch out with them is when they're on branches overhead. They'll follow you around until they drop, so keep your eye on them. These frogs just sit in one spot, and when you get close, it hops forward and spits up these three projectiles. Back away and shoot them. These moles will pop out of some of these pits in sets of three and run towards you. Shoot them in succession. Then you'll reach a long pit, and this is where you ride the turtle. That's what this thing is supposed to be. The porcupines that drop during this section are more of a distraction than anything. Just let them drop and be ready for the bees who fly overhead and drop three projectiles on a spread shot. Get in between them. You'll have to switch turtles about halfway across. Landing it is in a gimme thanks to your speedy jumps, so be careful. When you get to the other side, you've got some more moles, frogs, and bees before you meet up with the boss. Although it's not really a boss. But you do have to clear two of the elephant men before you can advance. So it's more of a mini boss. Get onto the branches up top so when they try to surround you from either side, they won't. And they'll have to catch up to you as you lead them to the battle spot. Turn into Megagon and quickly dispatch of them with your laser blast. Otherwise, you'll give your thumb some exercise by blasting them with your gun. Early on in the second stage, you get a choice of heading up top this way or carrying on at the bottom. If you go up top, you have to keep your eye on the frog shooting from underneath and jump to avoid their attacks as you blast the ones in front of you. If you're underneath, you don't have to worry about the frog's attacks from above, but there are bees up there, so pick your poison. I personally prefer the top route. Then there are several pits in a row with moles in some and no moles in others, so approach each pit cautiously. You get onto another flying turtle, and once again, all you really need to do is sit tight and let the porcupines fall around you. When you get on land, don't go anywhere, stay on the turtle because you'll go over another water pit. This time though, watch out for the bees, you might have to shift your position on the turtle a little bit. Don't get distracted by the mosquitoes when these porcupines drop from the trees and maneuver around. As long as you stay back, all you should be focusing on are the porcupines. Soon after is the boss, the devil tree. Your target is its eyes, and you have to take out both. So use your laser beam and you can cut through both of them, and it'll wipe out the bats that it fires at the same time. If you don't have any lasers, punch your way through the bats and then attack the eyes. If you're regular Amagon, you should be able to get mega keys after shooting down the bats. After a few shots to each eye, you'll cut this tree down and move on to the next zone, which takes place on the river. First enemy you'll meet are the crayfish that wander back and forth, and then do a little jump once you get close. Shoot them from a distance. Then there's the alligator man. You'll get two of these fuckers right away. They don't do much, just walk slowly and spit out a projectile ball, but they take a lot of shots to kill. And with two of them together on this spot, you're gonna wanna drop down right away and lay waste rapidly. Then there are these snails. You'll catch a glimpse of them in the water and they'll pop up onto the land before scurrying across and back into the water. Same for these seahorses. Shoot them from either side as you ride on this log across the river. Even the alligator men start out in the water sometimes. So be ready to back up so you have enough room to shoot them down when this happens. When they're on a platform in front of you, don't bother. Just let them walk off like idiots. Just be ready to avoid their projectile. You'll get to a waterfall with all these rocks you have to scale across. And all these fucking snails drop down from above. They drop fast and there's no warning whatsoever. So I'd advise you to stay as low as you can to maximize the amount of time you have to react. You'll then ride another log, but not before you meet the piranha, which flies out of the water in an arc pattern quickly. His attacks cover a lot of ground, so either shoot it, which takes a precise shot, or drop down to let it sail over you. This second option is what you're going to want to do when riding the log. The mini boss is two of these alligator men, 
Again, they take a lot of bullets. But as long as you stay back and fire rapidly, you're golden. The second stage in Zone 3 starts off with a trap where two snails pop out on a narrow platform. Creep up on the edge to lure them out before passing. Then you'll ride another log where you'll just need to crouch down and avoid the piranha. Then another one where there'll also be seahorses on either side of you, along with crayfish that drop down from above. This alligator man will give you little room to manage, so drop back to the platform before and let him wander off like an idiot. Shortly after is the boss, the hippo demon. It appears in the form of a pair of eyes behind the waterfall that tosses three water projectiles at you at various heights. Needless to say, you want to be Megagon for this fight. Stay on one of the middle rocks so you can back away after you fire your laser blast and maneuver your way between the stones. You don't want to have to jump to the opposite side of the screen because you barely have enough reach to land it. You'd rather take a couple hits as Megagon than to drop to the water and die. After a couple shots, the screen will turn dark and you'll be able to see this demon's true hippo form. It'll shoot projectiles out of each of its nostrils. Continue to lay into its eyes with the laser and finish him off. The fourth zone takes place in the rainforest, but it's the most fucked up rainforest I've ever heard of because it's riddled with supernatural bullshit. Like these things the manual refers to as spirits. They float aggressively across the screen pretty low to the ground, but as long as you stop whenever you see one, you'll be able to let it sail over your head. Just tread lightly and don't jump over obstacles until the coast is clear. Then you'll encounter these bipedal rats that come from either side. They don't do anything besides run, but they're quick, so be ready to jump and or shoot. Then these fucking blue heads show up called blue devils. They sit in one spot and spit blue fireballs until you pass them. Then they turn around and jump on your ass. So take them out ahead of time or lure them and retreat. Just make sure to stay out of the line of fire. Then you've got the Red Devils, who don't spit any fireballs, but they'll follow you around, which makes them quite a nuisance here when you've got all these rats at ground level, and Red Devils sneaking down from above. Blast the rats, but keep your eye on the Red Heads, and make sure you're not lined up with them as you pass the edge of the above platform. Then you'll meet the Owls, who swoop down in an arc pattern and fly away whenever you get vertical with them. Approach slowly when you see them and let them by, or simply shoot them if you're within reach. The fireballs pop out of the ground and actually back away from you before swinging over into your direction. Either shoot them or jump forward so they don't clip you. At the home stretch, it's Rat City. Just a shit ton of rats pouring in from both sides. So be ready to fire quickly to either side or you can hit up the branches for refuge. One thing that's absolute bullshit about this level are these really small branches. They present themselves as shorter platforms, but you can't use them as such. You'll fall straight through. It's deceptive as fuck and completely unnecessary. You'll reach a dead end and have to clear all the rats before moving on to the second stage of the zone, which is shrouded in darkness. The spirits here move vertically, but at least are in one spot. Wait for the opening before crossing. A group of red devils come through in a ridiculous bouncy parade. Try to line yourself up with where they're jumping over and shoot to maybe get some goodies from them. Then you'll see a bunch of eyes brightened up in the background, but only the ones where wings are flapping are the actual owls that end up swooping down. You'll be able to easily spot them when they're in front of the trees, but when the background is pure black, you might find yourself getting distracted by the rats that pass by before getting blindsided, so be aware. When you get to all these red devils that are chomping at the bit to get to you, back up, get down, and fire to take them out as they helplessly jump around trying to get up. Soon after is the boss, the skeleton man. He just walks back and forth and jumps around every now and then, nothing too complicated. But he can be problematic if you're Amagon, due to how close he tracks you and the fact that he can even jump onto the branches. After getting in enough hits, he'll break off into three pieces, which all behave in completely different ways. The legs stay in the center and move vertically, the torso scrolls across in the air horizontally and drops down on you, while the skull is a pain in the fucking ass and chases you around like a dog. It's difficult as fuck to keep all this shit away from you with a one-hit status. 
as Amagon, you're basically fucked. But you can make short work of him as Megagon, and even take out the broken down pieces along with his body with rapid firing. After wiping out these broken bones, you'll move on to Zone 5, the Rocky Mountain. Early on, you'll meet the Dragonbird, and despite its appearance and its name, it doesn't fly or breathe fire, it just walks back and forth. But it is quick and bulky, and does take quite a few hits to mow it down, although it also tends to slow down half the time. Stop to take them out whenever you see them. They'll just continue to follow you otherwise. Then you've got the blue dinosaur, which walks slowly, but it also takes a decent amount of ammo to take out, plus it shoots projectiles, crouch and shoot rapidly. Then the armadillos just wander back and forth, and they only take one hit, but they tend to traverse small platforms, and can jump from one to the other, so make sure you shoot them, don't bother maneuvering around them. These platforms, well, some, not all of them, will fall right after you land on them, so jump quickly to advance. Then you'll meet the blue iguanas, who just run from side to side. They don't do much on their own, but they do have strength and numbers, especially when you let these dragon birds join in to distract you. So again, whenever you see one of these damn things, stop to kill it. Then there are pterodactyls, who hang around up in the air, and then swoop down quickly and then off the screen. They're basically the same as the owl, except they're larger, they have a wider flying radius, and they'll occasionally drop armadillos, basically serving as a kinda sorta lackitude. You'll hop on this cloud and float across. Just stay crouched down, don't worry about the pterodactyls or any of the shit below you. And don't get off when you get into the cave, let it take you to the end and stay flat. Then these red iguanas appear. Unlike their blue brothers, these guys jump on their way towards you. Hit them as they land. The mini boss is a couple of these blue dinosaurs. Do the drop and shoot technique, and you're on to the next stage. I know I mentioned it before, but remember to stop and kill this dragon bird. It will become problematic if you let it follow you to these hills with the red iguanas. They're a pain in the ass if you stay above level with them to make sure there are spots you can retreat to to get a good shot before moving on. Then you'll come to a fork in the road where, if you take the top route, you'll meet the red dinosaur which wanders back and forth and jumps. Keep your distance and shoot. If you take the bottom half, you've got a bunch of armadillos which can provide you with some items, so pick your poison. As soon as you land on this platform, drop and shoot quickly to take out the blue dino. There's not a lot of space here. Hop on this cloud, take out the pterodactyl, and once again just ride the cloud to the end. You'll come to another fork, take the top half, there's less shit to deal with overall, and the boss is just ahead, the Megasaurus. It'll spit fireballs that light the ground up. Thankfully it stands in one spot, so you only have to track its attacks. You'll have to shoot its neck to lower it so you can reach the horn on its head, but after a bit, It'll extend back up and you have to start the process over again. Or if you simply morph into Megagon, you can swiftly slay this beast with your laser beam or just punch the hell out of the horn. The sixth and final zone is the beach, where you'll run into Cosmic Man who shoots fireballs and then teleports to the other side of you. Drop down and fire, and if you don't take him out, stop to kill him when he appears behind you before moving on. You don't want to deal with two of these guys at once, especially if you also end up with some of these UFOs who float around above you, making you feel like you're playing Moon Patrol and then swooping down at you. You can shoot them for some items, or you can just drop down and let them pass. Then there are Octopi, who bounce back and forth. Stand back and shoot them down. Lobsters will crawl up the trees. Shoot them if you can reach, or let them jump over you when you pass and take them down. Then there are these little guys called mini cars. The purple ones wander around and jump, and the gray ones are faster versions. Either way, drop down to shoot them if you're level with them. Then for the first time in the whole game, you'll come across a retread, and there are actually two of them. First the birds from way back in the first zone, and then the mosquitoes from the second zone, which really come in handy for acquiring items. Tread lightly. Whenever you see these guys come onto the screen, stop and kill them or just let them walk back off the screen. You don't want to end up with too much shit on the screen at once. 
The mini boss is just a chunk of UFOs. Wipe them out, and it's on to the final stage. It starts out with a series of birds. Shoot them down, or just simply drop down and let them pass. It looks like you're stuck here, but you can actually climb onto these trees to get up. Then you've got a long line of mosquitoes. Wipe them out to stock up on bullets and points, but be ready for the gray mini car that pops out of nowhere from behind when you come across this dip in the sand. At about the midway point, there'll be a ton of shit coming at you from all directions, although most of it really involves you dropping down to avoid it. Between the cosmic men you'll drop down to shoot, the birds you'll let pass by, or the UFOs that come up and swing back around. The start and stop method seems to work best here. After an infestation of octopi, you'll reach this cosmic man. Drop down and let him jump into your line of fire, but keep in mind that some of his attacks will cross paths with you, so be ready to jump. Soon after, you'll reach your rescue boat, which takes you to the final boss, the alien. It shifts from side to side, firing off lasers that alternate to either side. Trying to slide your way between this shit as Amagon and getting your shots off successfully is brutally difficult. Morph into Megagon, or you might as well just reset the game. Your target, strangely, is this little flashing star. Aim for it with spammed attacks with the laser, and after only a few shots, you'll wipe them out and finish the game. Then you'll light off some fireworks, set sail, and get the most abrupt congratulations of all time. You survived your mission, the end. And that wraps up this edition of Aqualung's Game Reviews. See you next time.